Hey, Usta Vani. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Singer Dad Reacts. My name is Josh, and I'm here to do another Nightwish reaction. Um, so welcome back, all of you from the Nightwish Army there. I appreciate your patience. I know it's taken me a little while to come back and do another Nightwish reaction, but I want to start getting on a more regular schedule, as I've said, and uh, as you should see from the last three videos, including this one that I've done, they're all a lot closer together. So um, hopefully you see that I'm back on track here. Um, I had to kind of look at what songs were recommended by all of you um, over the last year or so uh, since I've had my channel and kind of gauge which songs I, I wanted to kind of move forward with from Nightwish's repertoire. And the song of myself was one that kind of stood out to me just because of kind of the message and the uniqueness of it based on what I, what I uh, saw and read about the song. Um, so I did a little research as I do with the songs that I react to. This song is from their 2011 album called uh, Imaginarium. And it references the Walt Whitman poem, Song of Myself. Um, which is introspective, melancholic. Um, and it says the second half of the song is composed entirely of recited prose from various characters over a quiet instrumental background, further meditating on the beauty and misery of the world. So very interesting. So I'm looking forward to this experience. It does look like it's a pretty long song, so I'll jump right in here on the, the lyrics. Nightwish, Song of Myself, written by Tuomas Holopainen, which, of course, many of the Nightwish songs are. First verse, From a Dusty Bookshelf, looks like it's instrumental. Second verse is entitled, All That Great Heart Lying Still. The nightingale is still locked in the cage. The deep breath I took still poisons my lungs. An old oak sheltering me from the blue, sunbathing on its dead frozen leaves. A catnap in the ghost town of my heart. She dreams of story time and the river ghosts of mermaids of Whitman's and the ride. Raving harlequins, gigantic toys. A song of me, a song in need of a courageous symphony. A verse of me, a verse in need of a pure heart singing me to peace. All that great heart lying still and slowly dying all that great heart lying still on an angel wing. All that great heart lying still in silent suffering, smiling like a clown until the show has come to an end. What is left for encore is the same old dead boy's song sung in silence. All that great heart lying still and, dying, and slowly dying, all that great heart lying still on an angel wing. A midnight flight into Covington Woods, a princess and a panther by my side, these are territories I live for. I'd still give my everything to love you more. So third verse, Piano Black. A silent symphony, a hollow opus, numbers one, two, and three. Sometimes the sky is piano black. Piano black over cleansing waters. Resting pipes, verse of bore. Rusting keys without a door. Sometimes the within is piano black. Piano black over cleansing waters. All that great heart lying still and slowly dying. It repeats the mean little phrase there. Fourth verse, love. I see a slow, simple youngster by a busy street with a begging bowl in his shaking hand, trying to smile, but hurting infinitely. Nobody notices. I do, but walk by. An old man gets naked and kisses a model doll in his attic. It's half light and he's in tears. When he finally comes, his eyes are cascading. I see a beaten dog in a pungent alley. He tries to bite me. All pride has left his wild, drooling eyes. I wish I had my leg to spare. A mother visits her son, smiles to him through the bars. She's never loved him more. An obese girl enters an elevator with me, all dressed up fancy. A green butterfly on her neck. Terribly sweet perfume deafens me. She's going to dinner alone. That makes her even more beautiful. I see a model's face on a brick wall, a statue of porcelain perfection, 
beside a violent city kill, a city that worships flesh. The first thing I ever heard was a wandering man telling his story. It was you, the grass under my bare feet, the campfire in the dead of the night, the heavenly black of sky and sea. It was us roaming the rainy roads, combing the gilded beaches, waking up to a new gallery of wonders every morn, bathing in places no one's seen before, shipwrecked on some matte-painted island, clad in nothing but the surf, beauty's finest robe. Beyond all mortality we are, swinging in the breath of nature, in early air of the dawn of life, a sight to silence the heavens. I want to travel where life travels, following its permanent lead, where the air tastes like snow music, where grass smells like fresh-born Eden. I would pass no man, no stranger, no tragedy or rapture. I would bathe in a world of sensation, love, goodness, and simplicity, while violated and imprisoned by technology. The thought of my family's graves was the only moment I used to experience true love. That love remains infinite, as I'll never be the man my father is. How can you just be yourself when you don't know who you are? Stop saying, I know how you feel. How could anyone know how another feels? Who am I to judge a priest, beggar, whore, politician, wrongdoer? I am, you are, all of them already. Dear child, stop working, go play. Forget every rule. There's no fear in a dream. Is there a village inside the snowflake? A child asked me. What's the color of our lullaby? I've never been so close to truth as then. I touched its silver lining. Death is the winner in any war. Nothing noble in dying for your religion, for your country, for ideology, for faith, for another man, yes. Paper is dead without words, ink idle without a poem. All the world dead without stories, without love and disarming beauty. Careless realism costs souls. Ever seen the Lord smile? All the care for the world made beautiful a sad man. Why do we still carry a device of torture around our necks? Oh, how rotten your pre-apocalypse is. All you Bible black fools living over nightmare ground, I see all those empty cradles and wonder if men will ever change. I too wish to be a decent man-boy, but all I am is smoke and mirrors. Still given everything, may I be deserving. And there forever remains that change from G to E minor. Wow. That's a lot. Um, I'm not going to take a ton of time to go through this because this is already going to be a long video. But there's a lot of imagery and symbolism and profoundness in these lyrics. Um, so let me see if I can just skim through it and paraphrase what it means to me. Of a pure heart singing me to peace. I like that a lot. <clears throat> All that great heart lying still. There seems to be a lot around kind of facing your truth, facing your true selves, and embracing that, right? Embracing the fact that, oh, we're going to make mistakes. Oh, we're not perfect. Um, we're not always angelic. We're not always helping people when we should and, and all of that. And so we shouldn't judge others and we shouldn't judge ourselves too harshly as well. We should, you know, look forward and strive more to be kind and loving and real and true to ourselves, our best selves. Um, and really value the family too. I, that kind of came through as well during that last part of the song there where the, uh, I th the thought of my family's graves was the only moment I used to experience true love. So again, kind of that bond with the family, that love that we have with our family is the closest thing that we have in this life to true love. That's, that's kind of what I picked up from that. Um, and this whole section on 
you know, I know how you feel. No one can know how another person feels. That's very true. I try to avoid at all costs saying, I know how you feel, because like the lyrics say, you can't ever really know. And there are potentials to be really good and really not so good people in all of us, right? Who am I to judge, a priest, a beggar, whore, politician, wrongdoer? I am, you are, all of them already. Meaning, my, my take on that is we're all capable of becoming one of those um, a priest being on the good side of it and loving and kind and giving, teaching people of God, things like that. A beggar, someone who's not been successful in life, made some wrong choices as far as careers and things, um, had bad luck and kind of ended up on that in that place. Uh, the others are pretty self-explanatory, right? So I think it's all about... Um, as I said, embracing our best selves and really being being kind and good and I love this line where the air tastes like snow music or grass smells like fresh born Eden. So I think it's also about seeking out our best place in life. So these are all kind of symbolic in my mind. So it's not literally where everything smells really good and, and things like that, but it's about where we can be the most happy and, and content and comfortable and um, you know, have, have true happiness. So that's my take. Feel free to comment and and elaborate on what it means to you and some things that some takeaways that you have from the lyrics. I would be interested in that as well. I'm always interested to hear that and to learn more about you know what this means to everybody and how it touches them in some way. So with that, um, if you're new to my channel or if you haven't already, if you could please subscribe and click on the notification bell there. Um, it's completely free and there's no obligation when you do it. It just helps you to um, support the channel and also to be notified uh, if there are any new uh, uploads to my channel so you can be among the first to to see my reactions. So thank you again for your support. And let's dive right in here. Marco. That kind of reminds me of uh, Ghost Love Score. There's a part in it like this. Still poisons my lungs An old oak sheltering me from the blue Sun bathing on its death rose and blues Wow Her range is crazy I think that's the lowest note I've heard her sing in any of the songs that I've watched of theirs And that was strong she was strong on that note. Like some singers that tend to have like a higher voice, when you hear them sing like a lower, kind of kind of getting into that upper alto range, they'll kind of stretch for it or it'll be weak or you can tell they're really reaching for it. But that was strong. Let me go back a little bit. Don't shelter in me from the blue. When you hear that note again. Sunbathing on its death flows of blue. Oh. <laughs> He's 
adding that growl to it. Oh, that's cool. The other thing I love about Floor's voice is that she can go from a sound that is more kind of classically attuned or, you know, clear and smooth to a rock sound, but yet a lot of people, when they transition into a, a rock voice, if you will, and they, or they add the growl and things like that, it kind of makes me think of um, David Draymond, right, from Disturb, because he also is able to add the growl. He adds more growl than she does normally. Uh, but he can add that in and still have that consistency of tone and the vibrato and a good sound to it, right? She is the same way. When she adds the rock element to her voice, she still sounds great. Her vibrato is still there. You can tell the sound's still supported. It's pleasant. It's, you know, it still sounds great. So she's got a real gift for kind of switching her voice in different ways and changing it up through the course of the song. And as I've said with other reactions, that adds a lot of texture and, and um, color to the timbre and to the song and the story and everything. Um, so it really makes for a, an awesome performance and a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> this guy. Marco. Awesome. You guys going for it. I assume that whoa. Look at all these people. I've done reactions specifically where I've um, listened for Marco and things like that, right? So the big one for me was um, him and Tardia singing um phantom of the opera that one for me just blew me away as far as like his voice and just the strength of his voice and his range uh i was just blown away by that and so yeah i'm loving hearing him singing along and that's what's crazy about his voice is that a lot of times he'll be singing along with flora whoever's the lead and he'll be singing in the same range so yeah, he's he's great. And I know that the last time I did uh, some research, he had left the group, I think, for a little while. I think he was planning on coming back, so you guys can update me on that. But um, I believe that at least recently he left the group for a little while. So um, keep me posted on that. Uh, I'm excited to see when he comes back because he really adds a lot to the group. So let's go back here. And Impu is just awesome on the guitar. I love listening to him just go for it. That was one of the things I loved as a teenager, actually, 
when I was listening to like hard rock and things like that, Van Halen and some of these guys, I love to listen to the guitarists, right? Like Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vai, Santana, um, it's a guy, Neil Schoen. Yeah, I think that's yeah, the one from Journey. Yeah, those guys, I love listening to those guys. Okay. Sounds like a music box. Oh, Marco. <laughs> They're very together on that part. It's impressive. Oh, this is cool. Oh, there she goes with the head banging. It's awesome. Go, Impu. Man, this song is awesome. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. That's a fast beat. Da -da 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 -da. The song is so full of like different textures and different. I mean, usually with songs, when you have different verses in a song, they all kind of sound similar to each other, right? I mean, there's not a huge disparity of as far as the verses are concerned in the way that the sound comes through, the 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 tone, the um, the style of that particular verse like in this particular section here she's using like more of kind of a, a ballad type approach for for this particular section um so the music's kind of softer and more melodic and her voice is the same right so it just it's like when you think of like an artist and they're creating this masterwork and they're not creating this super boring like straightforward little painting of something they're adding all these different colors and textures and painting styles and and when you're looking at different parts of the painting you're you're seeing you know all these different things that and you notice something different every time you kind of look at the painting or different parts of it that's kind of what i feel like they're creating musically here with this song it's it's really impressive let me go back a little bit here See, they just transition right into this section. <laughs> this is the piano black section, okay. Yeah, amazing control. You can hear her kind of transitioning into kind of like a warm growl. Wow. 
I love too how they're they're okay with like just allowing the instrumentalist to kind of do their own thing. They did the same thing in Ghost Love Score. I think there was a whole section there where there was no singing and it was just instrumentalist. And I was just kind of watching it going, this is cool um, that they're just doing this separate section here. Because I think a lot of times you have the lead singer, you have the main front runners in the band and they kind of get a lot of the attention with a lot of bands and a lot of the workhorses like the drummer and people like that don't really get their time to shine. And so I feel like, um, with Nightwish, they get it right. They're like, okay, we want to have sections where we just have these instrumental riffs and, and interludes and kind of, you know, allow these other instrumentalists to shine and show what they can do. So it's, it's really cool. And it gives a different, again, a different texture and um, color to the to the music. Okay, we're almost to the end here. I think. They're so together. These are some hard rhythms too. Well, that was cool. I love during that section, their voices complemented each other so nicely because she was kind of doing more of this kind of angelic um, type voice. Um, more kind of this pure tone and he was doing kind of this da 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 you know more of like this rock kind of you know gravelly type uh tone to his uh what he was singing right and so they just kind of played off of each other and maybe that's there's some symbolism there to kind of say these are different aspects of who we are right there's this kind of angelic and pure and and pleasant t uh, part of who we are. And then there's this other part that Marco was representing that's a little rougher around the edges and and yet it still gives us grit and maybe it gives us courage and uh, the strength to get through some of the hard times and stuff that we face. And it's still, you know, a, a redeemable part of who we are. And that's just, I don't know, that's one of the thoughts that came to me as I was listening to them and the contrast there. Okay. Let's, let's listen to that one more time. Right in this part right here. <laughs> that was awesome. Wow. Yeah, so that was... Wow. That was incredible. Um, they're an amazing band, no question. And I don't think we should really take for granted or under appreciate how together they are, how completely synchronized they are with all the rhythms and the riffs. Cause like there are times where that da 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 da, where um, uh, Impu and Marco have, are having to really be in sync on the bass and the electric guitar um, as far as what they're playing and, and that kind of you know, intermeshing and, and, you know, being together and in sync along with obviously what, um, Yuka is doing in the drums. And then of course, Tuomas on the keyboards and all that. Um, I don't, I don't know if I saw Troy in there, but, uh, I'm sure he probably was there somewhere, but yeah, they all need to, they all need to play together 
And, and of course, Flora is just, she's amazing. She is basically like just a chameleon with what she can do with her voice. Um, she just has such control over what she does with her voice, what, what timbre she uses, what inflections, what, um, roughness or smoothness or purity she puts to the sound. She has complete control with all of that. And because of her roots and her training and, and her instincts and her experience with her voice, she, she can do it and support it and, and not do any damage, of course, to her voice and, uh, and really just cover a lot of ground as far as her range. And I talked about that earlier. I mean, she, she didn't go super, super high on this one, but she, she still covered a, a big range from the low stuff that she did toward the beginning there. Um, yeah, that rocked. That was, and I talk about this as well, as far as like what makes a good performance. And part of what I've said, I like to watch for is how much the audience is into the performance. And that doesn't always have to mean in it that they get emotional or, you know, they tear up or whatever on certain songs. Obviously that's going to be the case with certain artists, but in this case, this is a long song. And I saw throughout the entire song, there were many in the audience that were singing along and knew every word and were just rocking and knew when the parts were coming to rock and all that. So that tells me that, that the fans, you know, really love them. And it reminded me actually of like, performances I've seen uh, with Queen, right, where um, everybody knew the songs and they were just totally into the songs. And and uh, it's really neat to see that with, with a group and to see how much people love love the group and, and uh, know the songs and everything. So, yeah, it, it was amazing. Another phenomenal performance by Nightwish. And um, I'm glad I'm getting back to them. And I'm excited to kind of move forward with some of the others you guys have recommended. Some of the ones I recall from looking through the comments, Poet and the Pendulum, I think was one. Was um, was it Greatest Show on Earth? Um, I think that was it. Um, and there was Storytime. Um, yeah, so be sure to check out my Nightwish playlist. I always forget to mention this during my reactions, but I have playlists for each of the artists that have more than one reaction on my channel. So be sure to go and look on my channel for the playlist for that artist, and then you can see all the, the ones I've reacted to, right? So what that means is for Nightwish, you can go and you'll see that, oh, he's done Romanticide. He's done, of course, Ghost Love Score and the Wacken and the Buenos Aires both. Um, and there are several others out there. There's the Hank Port and... Um, Lorianson Phantom is out there along with the Tardia Marco version. So there's several out there. I'm going to take a look. I'll continue to uh, do some Nightwish reactions and uh, I'll base what I do next on your comments and, and how you vote and all that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Like I said before, for your support of my channel, I really appreciate it. And I enjoy interacting with you um, and getting to know you uh, from all around the world. And I'll end my reaction by saying the same thing I do in all my reactions. And that is, you need to know that you are special. You can accomplish your dreams. And you are loved. And I mean that. Um, we all need to hear that. I need to hear that sometimes too. You know, and um, that's just the way life is, right? Uh, and I hope that this channel can be a community for us and provide that light that we need in this world. It's part of the theme behind my channel, Music Lights the World. And that you can come here and enjoy the music and learn something and and find community here and, and feel that that love and, and that acceptance and, and that hope come through uh, in my words and in the and through the music. So with that, thanks again for your support and take care.